Welcome back to Maranatha Teaching Channel. I am Femi Fenojo, your host. Last teaching, we started looking at the epic story of the dealing of God with humanity from creation to the first coming of the Messiah and the inauguration of the church. Israel's Messiah came to his uniquely owned people sometimes between BC 6 and AD 33, but Israel and her leaders rejected their Messiah, their king, and handed him over to their Roman overlord for him to be crucified. We write in all the gospel accounts how Pilate, the Roman governor of the day, tried desperately to release Jesus. John chapter 19 verses 12 to 16 And from henceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour he said unto the Jews, Behold your king. But he cried, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then deliver he him therefore unto them to be crucified. These evil and wicked acts of the Jews and their leaders fulfilled prophecies and also triggered a series of events that will radically affect both Israel and the Gentiles, and also signaled the beginning of a new age or dispensation in the dealings of God with humanity. We shall take a quick look at some comments directly from the mouth of the Lord Jesus that revealed the inevitable consequences of Israel rejecting her Messiah. In Luke chapter 19, we read Luke's account of the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. As the Messianic king, the son of David, he made a bold public entry into the city of Jerusalem Initially, the crowd enthusiastically welcomed him while their leaders denied and rejected him. Not, not long after, the crowd too turned against him. The Lord Jesus lamented this situation as said in Luke chapter 19 verses 41 to 44. And when he, Jesus, come near, he beheld the city Jerusalem and wept over it, saying, If thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the days shall come upon thee, that thine enemies shall cast a trench about thee, and compass thee round, and keep thee in on every side, and shall lay thee even with the ground, and thy children within thee, and they shall not leave in thee one stone upon another, because thou knowest not the time of thy visitation. We also read at the beginning of Matthew's fifth discourses of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is recorded for us, in chapters 23 to 25, how the Lord pronounced woes and judgment on the religious leadership of the Jews because of their hypocrisy, blindness, and hardness of earth. We read from Matthew 23, 33 to 39, You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I said unto you, prophet and wise men and scribe, and some of them you shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall you scourge in your synagogue, and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth, from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zachariah the son of Barachias, whom you slew be between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem! Thou that killest the prophet and stoned them which are sent unto thee, how often will I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you will not? Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth, till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Israel rejected their king. And God's Messiah. Therefore, God turned his face away from Israel, but only for a season, until they will say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Israel, as a nation, rejected the Messiah, and God, from both Jews and Gentiles, forged a new entity, the church. At the end of the church age, God will again turn his attention back to Israel, 
At some point in the future, Israel will repent and cry out to the Lord their God. God will hear them, forgive them, and restore Israel. God will once again say concerning Israel, It is my people, and Israel will turn and respond to God, The Lord is my God, they will say. But that is sometimes in the future. Jesus the Messiah was rejected and handed over to the Romans to be crucified around AD 30 to 33. In 66 AD, the Jews of Judea rebelled against their Roman overlord. In response, Roman army were dispatched by Emperor Nero under Vespasian, the Roman general, to restore order. By AD 68, Vespasian and his army eradicated the resistance in the northern part of the province and turned their attention to the subjugation of Jerusalem. However, the Emperor Nero died in Rome. Vespasian had to return to Rome and was declared Emperor. He then fell to Vespasian's son, Titus, to lead the remaining army in the assault against Jerusalem. By the year AD 70, the Roman army had breached Jerusalem's outer walls and began a systematic ransacking of the city. The assault culminated in the burning and destruction of the temple that served as the center of Judaism. According to the Jewish historian Josephus, 1.1 million died and 97,000 were enslaved. Some of these were sent to toil in the mines of Egypt. Others were dispersed to the arenas throughout the empire to be butchered for the amusement of the public. Thus, Israel as a nation was driven out of the land God gave to them by the covenant promises to Abraham and they were dispersed throughout the world. The temple's sacred relics were taken to Rome where they were displayed in the celebration of the victory. Various pockets of Jewish resistance were finally extinguished in 73 AD. The temple had functioned as a political and as well as cultic center for the Jews. Therefore, its destruction in AD 70 resulted in cataclysmic political and religious vacuum and loss of national identity compelling the Jews to reinvent themselves to find other means of religious sustenance during the period of prolonged displacement. Early Christian historians Eusebius and Epiphanius claimed that prior to the destruction of Jerusalem by Rome's Rome in AD 70, the Jerusalem Christian, remembering the word of the Lord Jesus, fled Jerusalem to the Decapolis city of Pella. The temporary halt of military operations in Judea in between the death of Nero and the eventual election of Vespasian as emperor provided the Jews with an unexpected respite and allowed the Christian to escape to safety in Pella. During the last half of the 20th century, some critical scholars have attempted to challenge the accuracy of this report. That debate is beyond the scope of this discussion. So. Thus was fulfilled the word of the Lord Jesus we read earlier in Luke chapter 19 verses 41 to 44 and Matthew chapter 23 verses 33 to 39. The Jews were not only scattered but they endured harsh punishment while in the countries where they were dispersed. The most obvious persecution the Jewish people have ever faced was the Holocaust at the hand of the Nazis Germany during World War II during which almost 6 million were killed. Today, Jewish communities can be found in almost every country of the world. In spite of the persecutions, the Jewish people have survived. The Lord not only promised that Israel will be dispersed and persecuted, but that they will be preserved as a nation. Remember what we read in Matthew chapter 23, verses 38-39, to Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth to you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Isaiah 11, 11 to 12, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again, the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Patros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shina, and from Hamath, and from island of the sea. And it shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. 
we shall pick this up next time by the grace of God. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this teaching today has been a blessing to you. Please join me again next time on Maranatha Teaching Channel. Shalom.